The last type of conditional that we're going to be talking about actually is so important that I've broken it out into its own set of slides, but it's this idea of a nested condition. And the entire idea is if we think about how we've operated conditional statements so far, we've more or less just worked off of one branch of, oh, well, you know, it's true, I go do a few things, I go do a few things, and then I maybe move on with the rest of my code. And maybe if it was false, I do some thing or things as well. Well, okay, that's great. That is the foundation of a condition. But what happens if I use that true or false breakdown and yeah, you know, maybe I still do something here, but what if I added in another condition as well? And in this case, just to kind of flesh this out even further, so that happens, something happens here, something happens here. There we are. The entire idea is that well, you know, if we think about it, I can just replace these squares with more conditional statements and I can continue to combine them uh, all over the place. And that's exactly what we're thinking about. And just to see this more in a real life or real uh, per visual, uh, we could think about that very similar to temperature. Uh, you know, let's say for example, 59 degrees. It's 59 degrees out. Uh, well, is that cold? We're going to work with the fact that I'm a good old Southern boy. And so 59 is cold for me. So that is a true statement. Oh, well, I'll go put on a just, you know, nice little hoodie or uh, some light that not need to be any, it's not freezing. I, I said I'm Southern, but I, I didn't say I'm like Miami. But, oh, well, what happens if it's 29 degrees? Because, again, if we're thinking it's cold, I'm, I'm cold. Oh, well, maybe I need to make more assessments. Is it super cold? Well, 59, no, I can move on. But 29, oh, that's super cold. I'm going to put on a hat. I'm going to put on gloves because, uh, you know, again, I don't like the cold. But it's me sort of doing one condition statement, then making more evaluations and doing a second conditional statement or more realistic, at least for our sake here in North Carolina. It is a nice little piping hot 85 degrees. And so, oh, well, is it cold? No, that's a false statement. So I can move on and wear my flip flops and shorts and uh, polos. <laughs> Either way, when we are building out these nested conditionals, the big thing that we first need to do, because this can really branch out. If you ever saw Bandersnatch on a, uh, Netflix, you know, all years ago, that, uh, you know, we need to first establish what are the variables that we want to work off of for our criteria, because that's going to be effectively how we first divide out our, our categories. Once they are divided out, then we need to make another sort of evaluation. What do I need to evaluate now? In the case of my temp, you know, short formed temperature, once I established it was cold, I needed to reassess how cold. Is it super cold or is it just marginally cold? Very similar to uh, grades, for example. Well, then all I need to do is continue to repeat that process over and over and over again. And a really good way of seeing this in action is through taxes. I know. But if we think about taxes and how that entire process operates, well, it's actually pretty good for conditional statements. When you file taxes, you file as one of four categories. You either file as uh, single, uh, married filing jointly with your partner, married filing separate from your partner, or head of the household, where multiple people are bringing in money. So effectively, you could call that a status or a filer status or a filer or anything, but that is the first criteria that we need to sort of break out of. We need to make that as our first condition because it then will tell us effectively which one of these columns we need to work off of. So just to kind of draw down them. Then the next part that we need to think about once we've broken down 
our status is obviously the important thing, income. How much money did I make? Because as you can already see, we have different tax brackets for different incomes. Yeah. So super simple, just as a very, you know, not crazy one. If you were filing as a single and you had $5,000 income, all right, well, 5,000 is, uh, we would again be working off of a single column. 5,000 was less than 85 uh, or 8,300. So you're going to have to pay 10% on it. Okay, well, we take the income and we times that by uh, 0 0.1. No, no problem. You have to pay taxes. You pay $500 in taxes. Yay. We're not going to, you know, you may like them, you may not, but you have to do them. So, okay, well, let's bump those numbers up. Let's say, for example, oh, well, now you're filing uh, again. We'll work off of single, but you made 10,000. Well, 10,000 is larger, so 10K is larger than 8.3K. Oh, so, oh, what do you know? We're up a tax bracket. So we have to then come in and do a uh, point zero uh, or one, zero point point yeah, zero point one five. And so now I'm paying, you know, 1,500. Wrong. That is not how taxes work. That is incorrect. That is the uh, where we think, but that's actually overestimating uh, how much we pay. And to actually see this in action, let's jump up. Let's say, for example, I have I made sixty-eight thousand. Just to really jump up to this. All right. Well, if we look at this dollar bill, this giant dollar bill, let's say that that is cumulatively your sixty-eight thousand. Well. In that case, depending on the actual dollar, certain amounts are getting taxed differently. So for the first $10,000 that you made, that is getting paid or that is getting taxed at 10%. So in our case, that was the first uh, 800350 at 10%. Then we have another branch, basically the next round of value up to uh, 30, what was it? Up to 3350 is getting uh, taxed out at 15%. And just to expand this out a little bit again, here's that uh, 8,350, it, get it gets taxed taxed at 10%. Then the next 25,600 is taxed at 15%. And so just to kind of keep track of that, we've got the 8,350 and then the 25,600. And just so you can add those together, 0,0,500,9,3, zero, zero, carry a 1, 3. That's too many zeros. There we go. Yeah, no, just meh. okay. So either way, basically, you know, this first eight thousand again, that's getting taxed at ten percent. Then the next twenty-five thousand is getting taxed at fifteen percent. And then finally, uh, if you were to take the thirty-three. Uh, 950 and plus it by 34,050, you'd get the 68,000, but that is what gets what gets taxed at 25. So it would be 30, 50 times 0.25 plus 25,600 times or times asterisk times 0.15 plus uh, won't let me draw that low, unfortunately, plus 830 times 0 0.10. Okay, so we've, we now all understand taxes and we can do our own taxes. Anyways, what we can think about here, if we evaluate that out, is again, the first branch is getting calculated out as 10%, and then whatever uh, is remaining out of your income, in this case, 10,000 minus 830 or uh, 8,300 is getting taxed out at 
15%. So in this case, uh, your taxes are not 1,500. It is uh, just under, uh, just over a thousand. So a little, okay, a little bit nicer. And we would expand that out. So in this case, if we made 50,000, just like we saw in the graphic, uh, 8,000 is getting 10, that 25,600 is getting 15, and then whatever is remaining is being taxed at 25%. So again, we're just working off of our valuations. So now the idea really is taking this and converting it into code. So the first thing again is that we are going to need to break things down by their status. And this is how we could start this. And I'm just going, since it's a lot, I'm not going to type it out. I'll just sort of explain as we go through. I have first, obviously, my def to identify, oh, I'm making a function. I've, cal I've determined, uh, I'm gonna name it calc filing and it takes in two parameters, status and income. Now, for my sake, I am going to work on the assumption that status is a number. It just makes it easier uh, for me, but uh, a status of zero is what we will classify as a single filer. Uh, status of one is married filing jointly, two, married filing separate, and three, head of household. We could also have an else statement in the case where uh, they put a status that we are not going to be working off of in, for whatever reason. But now we have sort of in our effect built the structure, and that's the most important part. I've built the structure to operate from my code. Very specifically though, uh, we can also just break down all these individual pieces. Uh, as we can see, I have some sort of sample code to operate from a status of a zero and a income of 10,000. Since that is a value I've calculated out, I can check to see if my code is correct. And then just some simple uh, printing of my taxes to output that. And so we're converting it. Now, specifically, as you can see, we are operating with once again, the L if commands here because we are seeing uh, you know, multiple statuses, so we're just trying to pick which fork in the road we are operating from. Again, we're working off of the status, but the part I really wanna focus in on is obviously this pass command that you may be seeing. The entire idea to the pass command, just as the you know blob says, don't do anything. Just for right now, it is, you know, I don't need Python crashing on my code. And so I can just say, you know, hey, we will get to that later. Uh, so I just, I need there to be something in the if statement block for Python to not freak out. So here's the thing I'm putting in there. Just a blank, do nothing statement. And so again, just like I, I say here, it's good because that will allow us to focus in on just getting this first block done before we even try and worry about, you know, head of household, you know, let's not try and eat the entire, uh, I use a, a story of like, how do I eat an entire elephant, right? It's a very big creature. It's a very big problem. I need to focus on one bite at a time, focus on one bite at a time. So these I can ignore for now ignore for now great so now that we've isolated out that we're only focusing on uh, single filers now we can work off of looking at their income and specifically where they fall in line here very similar to how we were calculating out letter grades oh well if you're at this threshold you're here if you're at this threshold, you're here. And so again, I'm just showing that code because it is a lot of writing. So in this case, once again, we see that we have our if statement where the status is zero single. Then we start evaluating out our incomes. So if the income is less than 8350, uh, again, you made $5,000. All right, well, you only have a very simple tax to work off of, great. But let's just jump down to that 68,000. So again, let's uh, imagine that income equaled 
thousand. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, then in that case, we're in sort of this third bracket. And once again, we don't just take all 38 and times it by 25. We use a tiered system. So in this case, uh, the first 8,300 is still calculated out uh, or multiplied by 10%. Uh, for that tax. Then we break that down and I'm just sort of demonstrating you could have used the 22 or the 25 uh, example there. I'm just sort of showing it explicitly here. Uh, that is getting calculated out at the 15 and then whatever was remaining is going to be calculated out once again at 25. And as you can see, I do that once again for someone who made 150,000 or someone who made 200,000 or someone who shouldn't be writing their own Python code to calculate out their taxes. But, uh, you know, please donate. <laughs> but as you can then see, I also happen to have the LF for breaking it down. Now that you've done it for the single status, you would just repeat this entire process, copy and paste this all, and then just adjust the numbers for married file jointly, married file separately, head of household, and whatever other brackets or statuses that may come into being at some point in the future.